Richard Osler, or as many may know him, the Factory King, was born on the 20th of December, 1789, to a clothing merchant in Leeds. What did he do? Richard Osler was an English labour reformer and abolitionist, and was also a leader of the factory reform. So in fewer words, he fought for the rights of working children. Osler went to a Moravian boarding school in Fulneck for 12 years and became a commission agent. He strongly opposed child labour and thought the best way to protect them was to get a maximum 10 hour day. At the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign, poor children as young as five had to work for a living. Many of the jobs were unpleasant and dangerous. Children in factories had jobs like piercers and cutter mills and would spend the day repairing broken threads. Some were even sent under machinery while still running. Many fell ill or had bad accidents which left them with injuries. The poor medical care didn't help, so the result of a severe injury could subsequently be death. Most factory and mine owners did not think anything was wrong with giving nasty jobs to kids. They were made to work long hours with very little pay and there were no laws to protect them as there are today. Richard Osler wanted to change this, so as a first step he wrote a letter to the Leeds Mercury newspaper targeting the employment of children. John Hophouse, the MP, read the letter and decided to introduce a statement restricting child labour. Osler later formed a group called the Short Time Committees and continued to work for factory legislation. In 1831, the proposals were discussed and later passed, but they only applied to cotton factories. Osler and the Short Time Committees were unhappy with what Hobhouse had achieved, so continued to work for factory legislation. In 1847, Parliament passed the Factory Act, stating that no woman should work for more than 60 hours a week and no child under 10 should work. Laws on safety, ventilation and meal times were included. These laws protected workers and improved working conditions. After Queen Victoria's reign, some children were still working in factories, but today there are strict laws on what age and hours they can work. Although Richard Osler made changes to Britain, he did not make changes globally. Children today are still working in factories in other countries, for example India, but he still made a huge difference. I think that what he did was good, although not everyone was happy. The parents of some children weren't too pleased, and the factory owners weren't either. Now that children didn't work as much, and eventually not at all, there was less money coming in, and this wasn't good for poor families who needed money. For some families it was more important for a child to bring home a wage, rather than to gain an education. But on the other hand, some parents were happy, because the children didn't have to work anymore. The people who were most grateful were the children, because they were no longer manipulated and no longer had to work in harsh conditions. So good or bad? I can honestly say that Richard Osler made a huge improvement to the factory and children's lives. If it weren't for him, I could possibly be working in a factory picking threads from under running machinery. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give him a 9. This is because there were many people supporting Osler, so maybe if he didn't do anything, someone else would have. But I also give him a 9 because he only made changes to England, not the whole world. But overall, it was a major change. I can now conclude that Richard Osler made a huge change to England and left a lasting mark in factories today.